Right now, it's time to get on with that list we mentioned at the beginning of the show about the granddaddy of four-wheel drive station wagons. Let's see. It's the longest, the widest, tallest, heaviest. Next comes the oldest, most powerful, most luxurious, and last but not least, most expensive mass-produced four-wheel drive station wagon made anywhere in the world. What is it? Well, just right for the country club set that wants a little mud with their fun, it's the AMC Jeep Wagoneer Limited. You say you've got a pressing social engagement at that elite resort tucked away in the woods, but the main road was washed away by an unscheduled monsoon or maybe a blitzing blizzard. Well, if you have to be there, then nothing can deliver you in more style than a Jeep Wagoneer. Though smaller than many mid-sized cars, its tractor-like grill and 4,500-pound weight gives this muckslinger the appearance of being able to handle almost any natural or social disaster. AMC Jeep have kept the Wagoneer in business by carefully changing its market niche from dirt farmer to society curiosity. While you can still buy a steerage model for $11,400, the first class limited begins at $16,900, and our featured debutante comes out at a precious $18,000, squire-like wood tone and all. That all includes extremely comfortable leather bucket seats that offer the type of head, leg, and shoulder room that went out of style with the first oil embargo. Back seat chaperones also suffer gladly, and you can actually get three of them back there. Or if it's other cargo you're after, the plush bench can be folded down and forward or removed entirely to provide a truck-like capacity of 95 cubic feet. Ensuring those once-in-a-lifetime antique finds can be shuttled home with nary a scratch. But if you do use the rear hatch for such chores, you have to be careful of the tailgate side hinges. On our Wagoneer, they'd bind and bend far too easily. Tacky, tacky. That may also be your opinion of the outside-mounted full-size spare tire that drops heavily to the ground, and it's a monster to replace. Since that's also a truck-like feature, you won't then be too surprised to find the interior and dash a bit like a gussied-up pickup. Plastic wood and deep pile carpeting are everywhere. And frankly, we wish Jeep would spend a little less time on their trim and more on solving the problem of instrument glare. It would be nice to be able to read the otherwise competent set of gauges. But one place where money was well spent was on the simple to operate select track system to go from two to four wheel drive. Borrowed from the Eagle line, the dash mounted switch means no more jumping outside to lock the front wheel hubs. However, the two speed transfer case is still good training for the Olympics. Both finesse and strength were needed to keep the floor mounted high low lever from producing a lot of gear grinding. Once engaged, the Wagoneer shows its Jeep lineage by taking on almost any terrain put before it. The Limited does come with all-weather tires rather than real off-road rubber, but the weight and wide stance of our carry-all makes it harder to get stuck than to get on the Boston Social Register. But while that didn't really surprise us, the normal on-road performance of the Wagoneer did. The ride was bouncy but not rough. Noise was limited to the wind rushing around the boxy exterior. It produced a reading of 72 decibels at 55 miles per hour. That's well within the average range for all passenger cars and makes this Jeep a comfortable long trip vehicle. In a low speed maneuver, you'll find the quick steering partially compensates for the slow response of the archaic all wheel leaf spring suspension system. While body roll is less than expected, there is a lot of front end plow. The simple truth is that the Wagoneer is so heavy, it just takes a lot of time for it to react. That might cause trouble in higher speed emergencies. We couldn't enter our avoidance test at the prescribed 55 miles per hour without killing a cone or two. On the other hand, if you have to run away from trouble, the optional 5.9 liter V8 and fine three-speed automatic provide very good power. We judge a passing time of 5.2 seconds from 40 to 55 miles per hour as very reasonable. And when you can run no farther and must face the music, fast stops are also handled with class. Minimum wheel lock and fade provided dead straight halts of 141 feet from 55 miles per hour. Again, at the better end of average for all vehicles. 
About the only thing one might find socially unacceptable about the Wagoneer is mileage. The EPA rates the V8 automatic at only 13 city, 18 highway. The standard 4.2 liter V6 does a full third better. Our closed course test mileage of 14 makes this Jeep an expensively fancy partner. But there is good news. Next fall a smaller and we assume more thrifty and less costly Jeep XJ Wagoneer will be introduced. This alongside the current high roller should provide a full range of comfortable four-wheel drive wagons enough for on and off-roaders of all income.